Good morning, everybody. What does that say? It says praise what? Does yours say praise Dio too? Yeah. Huh, weird. It's kind of faded. Yeah. This beer can is something crazy. Heavy metal parking lot. The can is wild, though. It's like silver and black. It's got a bunch of oh, like that smells cultist something. looking stuff. Come on. Smell that beer. It's American black lager. Mmm. It's kind of like a stout, but it's a black lager. How is it? It's um, it's not bad. You're always the first to sip it. Yeah, I like beer. No problem. It's not Delord. Is that what it's called? The, the Chicago beer you gave me? Oh, no. It's not a beer. It was Malort. Yeah, it's not Malort. So there you go. Oh, that's high praise. It's not the shittiest thing I've had. <laughs> it's better than Malort. That's such a low bar. Oh. You don't like it? It's not my favorite either. But I go for cans. Yeah, it uh, looks like it was made by a bunch of sweaty teenagers, and it tastes like it, too. <laughs> it probably was. It's like their first uh, first go at making Heavy beer. Metal, baby. But it's from, it's from Salt Fire, which we've had beers of theirs before. I don't know which ones, but uh, yeah, this one's not my favorite. I apologize. I got a shitty beer this week. Well, today's a special night anyways. Because, it really is. Uh, we've been working on this for almost a year, and we're finally getting to the bottom of the shaft of the... Conspiracy Theory Iceberg. The epic conclusion. We've reached the ground. <laughs> We're there. Yeah. There's nothing else after this. We've hit every conspiracy theory. I really wanted to count how many there were total, but I didn't. There's 10 tiers, bad. or do you mean like total, total? Like um, how many individual yeah. tiers there are? There was probably... There's like 30 per, right? Yeah, over 300. Yeah, I know some tiers had... Well, I think this one only had... Actually, no, there was like way more than 30. Um, there was like 30 per level, and if you have 10, that's 300. But no, the there was way more than 30, less. because every episode, you and I did right. about 15 apiece. There's about like 60 yeah. per level. Yeah, I don't know. It was a, it was a shit ton. That's there's like, there's over 600. Some We've covered a lot of some, theories. Some were better than others. You know, oh, yeah. I'm trying to think what my favorites were. It's kind of hard to just pick one out. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good ones. A lot I can of tell you some ones. of the ones that I hated. Oh, which one? <laughs> there were several that I hated. I like I like Solar Plexus Clown Gliders. So that was a that pretty was good an one. interesting one. Solar Plexus Clown Gliders. There is one on this tier that I was laughing so hard at, just because oh, really? it's like the the theory of it itself is just hilarious. And I'll tell you which one when we get to it. But I, I laughed really hard. I might have a few funny ones myself. I will have to dig deep. Yeah, to find really it really deep. Um, but I did watch Saw X, the new Saw. It was actually surprisingly good. They went back to the original writers of like the first two or three. Really good. So it had a really just, good twist at the end. It wasn't just like a giant cash uh, grab. Like a lot of those franchises like kind of go there, like where Hellraiser went. No, so I didn't. We got to make this to keep the rights. We're, we have about a $5,000 budget. <laughs> we don't even have the original guy. But uh, yeah, let's fucking do it. Fuck it. Yeah. No, they had the original, like the original jigsaw guy in it. and i didn't get the cash grab um feel to it it was like they're kind of like a passion project from the original people that did it mm. really good it kind of made me nauseous which is hard to do it was really rough yeah. <laughs> some of the some of the visuals get i'm probably really pass intense. on that i don't want to see people sawing their legs in half or something but yeah okay. <laughs> you're, cl you're close <laughs> um and it was also uh my uh youngest son's second birthday so it's kind of crazy that my youngest is two but okay. i'll have twins on the way so you, you guys know. like make some popcorn sit down with them and watch all the saw movies together yeah, in a row it's like uh this is what adulting's called yeah. this is what it's you like, do welcome to the real world and we showed him all of our bills that we have to pay because he's getting older. Tuesday and yeah. showed him our taxes that are due all the time. Yeah, we're like, welcome to the real world. You're getting two. Time to contribute to the family. Um, all right, but yeah, I'm really excited that we're actually finally putting a cap on this iceberg because it has been a long fucking time coming. Yeah, let's finish this bitch. So we'll just jump right in. <clears throat> all right, well, let's start the end of the iceberg here with the first theory, the Bank of Souls. So the theory here revolves around a mysterious concept of where a soul comes from and also where it goes, right? So some people think, oh, a soul comes down from heaven or comes straight up from hell if you're an evil shit. Uh, but this idea suggests that there is a, a physical repository of sorts or bank, as the name suggests, that houses souls before and after their physical existence. The theory goes deeper, suggesting that it's the bridge between life and death. 
A soul will be withdrawn from the bank when it's ready to enter the physical state and will then be deposited back when it's done. So it's like a banking system. Some Literally. Some bank cartel runs it. Yeah. I bet it's Chase Bank. Yeah. And it's like... Whoever's in charge of the bank of souls, depending on what you believe in, like, we'll just reach in oh, at Jay- random, grab a soul, and then put Jamie, it in you. Jamie Dimon, yeah. Fuck is Jamie Dimon. The CEO of Chase Bank. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, who the fuck is this? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, so some take this further with the belief that there is only a limited amount as to how many souls can actually exist as the same at the same time in human history. So it's finite. It's not infinite, and eventually, souls can run out. Mm. Supposedly, it exists at the base of the tree of life. So I think we've all heard that the tree of life bears fruit, right? Some mysterious fruit. In this case, the fruit would be the souls that's just blooming from this tree. The tree does go through different seasons, mainly seasons of plenty and seasons of famine. Someone that is born during the season of famine and there aren't any souls to be given, that person will exist without a soul. Ooh. Yeah, so they're born, but there's no soul to be deposited, so they're just this husk. Like an NPC? (laughs) Yeah. People online have taken it upon themselves to call these soulless individuals NPCs and believe that they exist as a form of test for those who do have a soul. So, like, there's theorists that are out there that are like, hey, have you ever... If you ever run into someone who just literally questions everything you do, who just kind of makes your life a living hell, who's just like, why? But what's this? What's that? What do you mean? But why? But why? Yeah, they're just testing you. Yeah. They're testing your soul. The end of times has been attributed to this theory, stating that when the tree eventually runs completely out of souls, that is when the apocalypse will occur. Or there'll be one last soul and only NPCs left. Exactly. That'd so it's just. Weird. Bunch of NPCs playing around in a sandbox. Soulless, empty husks of people. So that's the Bank of Souls. Beautiful. What do you think, Cleet? Yeah, it's true. Hmm. I'm an NPC, I know. I don't have a soul. So you got jacked. You have no soul. The next one is Incorruptible Saints. This theory stems from the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches. It's pretty interesting. So when someone or something dies... You know, you go through a phase of decomposition as the body breaks down. That is, unless you're one of these incorruptible saints. These saints, after death, were miraculously preserved and therefore did not suffer any of the horrifying decomposition. The first saint who was claimed to be incorrupt was Saint Cecilia. Crazy thing is, their bodies weren't mummified. They had no other preservation techniques performed. They simply didn't decompose. Their skin remained soft and pliable and have been rumored to give off a sweet, unearthly odor. Others produced oils that defy any scientific explanation. Some of these saints were covered in quicklime, which normally would have easily destroyed any human remains, but it had absolutely no effect on their bodies. There are stories of a medical examiner placing a finger into a wound of a saint, only to see fresh blood on his finger when he withdrew it. Another tells of a finger being amputated from St. John of the Cross several months after his death, which caused blood to flow from the wound, which wouldn't happen if you were just a normal dead person. St. Nicholas of Tolentino's arms frequently bleed after 400 years. So crazy shit, if it's to be believed by this theory. So supposedly there's some saints who just don't decompose when they die. They just. I believe all eyewitness testimony. Um, okay, and this is the one I was telling you about that I was laughing really hard at. And it's not like the theory itself, but just the idea of it. Um, and it's God of the Gaps never existed. Have you ever heard of God of the Gaps? I think it's an explanation of when, whenever there's a gap in scientific technology, people ascribe it to God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh, but it just made me laugh. So um, God of the Gaps refers to the idea That whenever there is a gap in scientific understanding or simply something we cannot explain or understand, God is simply placed into that gap as a form of scapegoat or placeholder. This perspective gains some origin in the observation that when some individuals, mostly those with religious inclinations, point something out where science falls short of explaining something around a natural phenomena, they insert the presence and existence of a divine creator. Basically, God fills all the gaps left by scientific knowledge, filling them with the divine intervention or influence. 
This has very obviously been heavily debated and criticized because you can't simply say that because science doesn't have an explanation, that must mean that God exists. Friedrich Nietzsche wrote in his part two on priests that into every gap they put their delusion, their stopgap, which they called God. This ties back to Henry Drummond, who was a 19th century evangelist lecturer who said something along the lines of, God either exists of the God of everything or doesn't exist at all. You can't plug and play where it benefits your missing pieces. So the fascinating thing about this theory in itself is as we are, as since we're at a crazy point in science where so many of those gaps have been filled over time, the presence of God has become smaller and smaller, which means that the belief may be getting smaller and smaller of God. It's kind of crazy, right? Because, mm. you know, you think of a hundred years ago, you're like, oh shit, I can't explain this. What is now a simple scientific answer? And they're like, it must be God. God exists. And now it's like, oh no, that's just, uh, it's just chemistry. I still think there's several gra- gaps in like scientific knowledge though. Oh yeah. There, are, there always will be. Yeah. But you know, do you think that it just explains God though? Do you think it's, in existence of God is why those exist? No, but I think that there's persuasive arguments as to why one would exist. Yeah. But I mean, sure. But God either exists as an absolute, all-encompassing entity in every aspect of our lives, or not at all. So I just thought it was funny, just the idea of, like, someone's like, oh, yeah, how the hell does that happen? Someone's like, I don't know. Uh, God, I guess. That so, makes sense. I don't know. Or in our show... It's aliens. You can't explain it. It's aliens. I thought it was Agartha. You just got to go in a deep hole until you find your paradise. You have to go into hiding and you realize you're in the center of the earth. You see Hitler. You see some T-Rexes. Probably King Kong. And it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. Uh, My first one is oil resources from humans never existed. Interpret that how, as you want, Britain. <laughs> a lot of stuff Interpret that doesn't that exist. Interpret that how you fucking want. <laughs> how are you going to find someone fucking that? Anyways, <laughs> you seem a little salty um, as if you couldn't find oily what people. I, what I believe is, do you remember when people were, were talking a lot about peak oil? That seemed to be like a huge thing when we were like probably 16. We'd always hear this is peak oil. Yeah. Peak oil. Well, I believe what this theory is talking about is that the oil reserves were actually about to run out until the global elite or ruling class figured out a way to create more oil. From people thereby making it a renewable resource, which sounds pretty good, right? But the only catch is, yeah, you're soil and green. It was made from people. The old twist, you know? That's an M. Night Shyamalan twist. The whole time you were powering your car because of your neighbor's body. People that point to this uh, are unsure if it's just oil or like natural gas, because, you know, methane gas, we always fart all the time. Sure. And, you know, maybe that's what we were running out of, and that's what they turn people into. And, um, you know, you can either honor our ancestors or yeah. fucking burn them. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Get some oil out of it. So it is believed that this knowledge is suppressed to the public due to the overwhelming amount of outcry that they would see. So, like, I mean, imagine, like, would you still drive your car if you knew that, you know, your dad just passed away? And they're like, oh, we're going to turn it into 85-grade octane gas. I mean, I still got to get to work. Would you Would you drive your entire energy throughput of your father? Yeah. To get to work? Sure. Would you not? You're a monster, Brit. You're a monster. I mean, it's that or you're burying him. Mm. I work virtually. Put him to I don't use. have to make that decision. Right. <laughs> I just, I think you're a monster. Just so you, you're just morally stupendous. Superior. Uh, superior is the word. <laughs> so I'm like morally superior. You had that locked and loaded. So how they do that, you know, I don't fucking know, but maybe the next time that you drive through a cemetery and see an excavator, you know, maybe you should ask some questions. Yeah. You I just was, see him like digging up an arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we got a gas tank for the next week, boys. Oh, I was shopping yeah. on Amazon for prime deal days and they had what's called a human oil funnel. It makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> and it was prime. Mm. Could have had it the next day. Yeah, that would have been good. It was in my cart for a mere few seconds. I and I was like, you know what? Funnel. You can do a lot of good things with the funnel. The next one is feelings auto suppression. So this is the idea that human emotions on a global scale are being suppressed. Okay. This action of suppression is due through an algorithm or algorithms done on via 
uh, social media platforms like TikTok, the YouTube shorts, or uh, whatever the Facebook thing's fucking called. Like, fuck you, fuckerberg. It's also um, called uh, depression. So, yeah, the algorithms take you through doom loops of Ooh. shocking or depressing content, you know? It's been a while since I've been through a doom loop. I mean, have you ever... I mean, you pulled up the TikTok, and, like, mm-hmm. you can, like, watch that shit for hours. It's weird. I love TikTok. It's um, bad. Yeah, you can like, lose a lot of time, and it's just I will stupid content. I will sit down to poop, and I'm like, I'll just watch some TikTok. And then 15 minutes go by, and I'm like, I haven't pooped yet. We've come a long way from reading the shampoo ingredients. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're crossword puzzles. Like, uh, okay, I don't know how to pronounce that. but Our father sat on the shitter doing crossword puzzles, and now we're watching TikTok. So the idea is this is done on purpose, but for what cause? You know, over time, it is believed that this will make people more apathetic and withdrawn from the world, and they're more likely, maybe, to join the next simulation. Because okay. imagine you're just watching all this bullshit, and you're like, oh my God, Ukraine, everything's lame. And then, like, Elon Musk goes like, hey, bro, I got a simulation where you're a rock star. 80 chicks. 80 at once? Would you do it? No. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Me neither. All right. The last one I'll be covering, and I put a significant amount of time researching this, is porn stars leeching your energy. (laughs) That's true. That's why they took the hub away. I spent hours I bet. looking into this topic. Just I bet you did. Looking into every visual content that I could figure out how to ascribe what this means to you guys. And it's hard so. because they took the biggest source away from Utah, so you really had to some, dig. Some might say a lifetime of work. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> it's like 30 years worth of work. This goes all the way back to the succubus, or the succubi, leeching your erotic energy. You know? Mm. <laughs> your erotic energy. Apparently, instead of some demon red chick visiting you at night to <laughs> steal your soul or something, they've now adapted more of a modern approach. I have come for your seed. The internet. Yeah. You know? Instead of having to, you know, walk to someone's house, they work virtually now. So through mass communication applications, they have been able to steal more and more energy. Now, to what end? Might you say? I mean, why does a succubus steal erotic energy from you? Because it makes them powerful. I guess. Makes them young and vital. All right. Well, it's kind of hard to follow up with a succubi, but we're going to go into something called Virus 23. So this one ties into other shared consciousness theories that we've literally covered in and out in every single way. Uh, With shared consciousness, we've discussed the idea that we may be included in a memory bank And that seemingly some of our ideas that pop into our heads without a warning may have come from someone on the other side of the planet and vice versa. You remember those topics, right? Like some ideas will just pop in. It's probably because of someone way far away. So with this massive memory bank, some theorists believe that it's possible to input a form of virus. Enter virus 23. cool. Okay. Like a solar plexus clown glider. Yeah. This virus acts as a self-replicating contagion that can easily be put into this memory collection and then dispersed to everybody at any time. So do you remember back in Tier 2 we covered something called Cicada? Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of the theories is that this whole nationwide scavenger hunt thing they did, um, they believe that's what um, started this whole thing, that they were the ones responsible for Virus 23. So it's a way big callback to Tier 2 when we were still fresh and excited on this iceberg we were traveling down. Does this thought virus affect you when you're awake or asleep too? The theory dives into the fact that this virus can be secretly hidden within within a certain story, character, or any other thought as a form of trip mind that causes the virus to go off, instilling paranoia depression, anxiety, etc. So it can literally be like when you're sleeping or awake. So let's say you, like, for example, so you SpongeBob. Could be, you could be sleeping or woke. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take SpongeBob, right? SpongeBob. Let's say he's this trip mind that causes virus 23. You're watching SpongeBob during the day. You're like, oh, okay. And this, you're being polluted with this virus. Then you go to sleep. <laughs> Sorry. Then you go to sleep and you have a dream about SpongeBob. Well, it's, it's happening again. But the idea is like literally like any time there's like this secret tripwire, no matter what. And when it happens, when you think about it, it installs this virus and it goes out. God damn you, SpongeBob. And obviously the purpose of that would be mind control and creating a docile 
you know, Obviously, world, whatever. I mean, that's like the next step, I clearly. Clearly. And then on to something called pancreas denial, <laughs> which is a fun title. Um, and this one, this one had a few different branches on it, so um, I just kind of had to summarize each of them. One of them suggests that our food and our water supplies have been poisoned as a means to destroy the pancreas, which can make us humans more obedient and subservient. But it didn't really have a lot of supporting ideas. The second thing I found was that, that some suggest you don't need your pancreas to live. And that Big Pharma just likes the idea of peddling insulin to people as a means to save something you don't really need. You don't need insulin, dumbass. Right. But they make you think you do. You don't need insulin to survive, you idiot. Some think that the third chakra is in the pancreas. And that the powers be don't want you to have access to that power. So they deny what it's even capable of. So it's like this whole thing of like the pancreas has this secret hidden power and it's like a scapegoat to just make sure that you keep buying insulin and that you can't access your third chakra, yada, yada. Pancreas is just a pancreas. It's fucking truth. And then last is patterns manipulation. So this one was super vague, but what I gathered, it suggests that everything we do, everything we feel, and everything that happens in our lives is all based on a form of patterns. Patterns govern everything. It's all part of the plan. People who have been under the influence of psychedelic drugs have reported seeing patterns all over the place. Fractals. That they've never seen under regular circumstances. It ties into the sacred geometry and our thought patterns as we think about the things we know. So when you think about patterns, right, if you're talking to somebody and you want them to believe something new or you want to change their idea of how they think, you have to change your perspective you start by going over what they already know about a subject, and then you work your way through it that way by instilling new patterns and new ideas and new thoughts so that you can ultimately change the way they, they think. The theory suggests that same thing, but in our reality, that our ideas can change or alter by a form of magic or mysticism via this pattern manipulation by taking what we know and then branching out in other ways to change how we view something. So it's really weird. Basically, everything is a pattern, and it can be changed. So I will be talking about the Ascension Blacklist, or the Ascendance Prevention Program. What is the Ascension Blacklist? Well, it's essentially a group of people not allowed to move to the next plane of existence. <laughs> They're just refused. You yeah. have to stay! I know, bitch. You're going to go back to Earth and get reincarnated. Can you imagine being stuck in the second dimension? Yeah, do more. What a man. bitch. So the Blacklist is created supposedly... By a group of people that are from, uh, that are reincarnated, but like they remember their entire past lives, right? And they form secret societies so that they can meet with other people that have the same affliction, or maybe it's not an affliction, I don't know, that remember their past lives in clear crystal detail and have a universal look through the human experience. Hmm. It is said that they may, in fact, change their minds if someone who was horrendous in a past life redeems themselves, and then they can move on to whatever whatever new nirvana they need to go to. Like, so to put this into theory, all right, so let's suppose, Britain, that you were a thief in your past life, sure. and you stole from children and robbed the poor, sure. and uh, they remember that, and they're like, yeah, you know what, Britain, you're not going to go to heaven because we wrote you down on a list, and you get reincarnated. Well, then maybe in this life you're like kind of good. It's like, well, you're still blacklisted, get reincarnated, and maybe you're just like the fucking Pope. I don't know. And uh, then you're allowed to ascend eventually. You know, could go away. So you have to like live another life to prove yourself to not be a shithead. Yeah, potentially. Or they might just hate you. Or like you might be like the perfect dude and you're like on the like uh, public transit and you bump into the guy and he's like, Britain, 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 and I just get shanked. Britain, 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 I never going to get ascended. Like one guy, you just, you know, just the he's one. Like, Fuck that guy. Divine intervention, down. like I was just supposed to bump into this guy. The one guy I shouldn't have bumped into. Yeah. Or I come back after robbing people, and I'm the one who gets robbed constantly. Mm. Like I get a constant weekly break-in in my house. You walk into the shank pit, and you can't get out. Shank pit. Yeah. That sounds like a good time. <laughs> All right, let's jump into the next one, which is called The Third Eye is Located in the Anus. Excuse me? The Anus. You know, I didn't Google this one. Why? Uh, I can only recklessly speculate about what this is about. But I guess people want to find meaning and truth through their no-no hole. You could have Googled it. It probably has what? like some kind I'm of not, weird shock. No, thing. there's nothing there. Did you Google, Google it? Google it right now. Third eye is 
In. In your. Anus. Your anus. If I can spell anus right. Your anus is your third eye. Want to talk to spirits? <laughs> you can talk to ghosts through your ass and you didn't even Google this? <laughs> Butthole right. chakra. Um, see? Butthole chakra. Wow. Thanks, Brandon. I really appreciate that. All right. And the last one that I'll cover is doing the thing plus importance of love. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't, find, I didn't find a goddamn thing about this. Maybe. Or maybe I did. Maybe I found the big conspiracy. Oh. So is love just a money-making scheme? For anyone that had gotten married, we can all know that there is a slight markup on things like photography, wedding cakes, and the venue of your choice. Or a diamond ring. Just a slight, you know, minuscule, like, uh, cost there. You know? They don't really push that too high. But anyways, it is theorized that love has been twisted beyond its original purpose to uh, suit the more consumeristic demands. This goes beyond just weddings, though, however. Like, let's talk about Valentine's Day. If you really love somebody, you got to buy them flowers. Sure. you got to buy them chocolates. you got to take them out on a date. And why do you need to do that? Well, I know why. Because fuck you. That's why. Because it's been hijacked by capitalism. So you're saying love has been translated to doing fancy expensive We don't even things. know what love's natural purpose was because it's been hijacked by some type of consumeristic demand and it's been lost to the ages. Let's talk about something called oikiosis. So this theory presented itself in ancient Greece in Stoic ethics. It's a technical term that has been translated as appropriation, orientation, familiarization, affinity, affiliation, and endearment. The overall idea of Stoicism, which is what this ties into, without diving too far into it, is the purpose of life is the perfection of the human soul. It's one giant test that will determine how we will be judged in the afterlife, and I gotta say, fuck this test. Oikiosis is the sense of belonging, the opposite of alienation, and if the whole purpose is to perfect humanity, it has to be through actions of charity and goodness to others. The other part of this theory, which is why it's on the iceberg to begin with, refers to something called Dyson's teachings. Dyson is a German concept from the 19th century that suggests oikiosis is falling apart due to humanity's increased isolation. Humans over time have become more selfish and self-centered, which is causing the fabrics of their soul to fall apart and tarnish because we simply don't give a shit enough about other people. We're all looking out for number one, ourselves. Yeah. This whole being good to each other to be judged in the afterlife is just going to shit because no one cares anymore. Okay, Osis. We're all just fighting to survive. The next one is all conspiracies are true. Mm. This is like, I should should be the grand finale, but it's not. So although the title here might suggest that every single theory is true, which would be utter chaos, that's not exactly what it's saying. In essence, it suggests that all hidden truths or hidden secrets in the world are actually connected in one way or another. All ideas of religion or karma, spiritualism, chakras, etc., etc., they actually tie back into one root source. The idea is that the world in reality itself is a complex puzzle that shouldn't and therefore can't actually be solved and figured out. Sad. So it's just... We have, there's one root of everything. And over time and everything, like all these theories have branched off about, you know, you think about the, the main topic of mind control. Well, it goes to organizations or it goes to mind manipulation or it goes to a disease or it goes to microscopic dust robots that get into your brain. So it's just like the idea of control has been dispersed in so many different theories, but the idea is control, you know? So it's kind of interesting. And then I'm going to end with forced soul removal. Mm. The title actually kind of gives this one away, which means that you're actually born with the soul. So if you talk about the bank of souls before, right? When you're born, a soul is deposited into your body. Well, what's to say that that soul can't be removed while you're alive before dying, right? Like, not like you die and your soul goes away, but it can be taken away from your body. Mm. How would that happen? Yeah, how would that happen? Could be from some kind of cult. Could be some succubus. kind of paranormal, a succubus yeah, yeah. taking your soul. Star. Yeah, like you watch too much of the P-Hub. Mm. Yeah, too much of the Hub. And 
your soul will be removed. But the problem is, is if you're without a soul, some theorists suggest that it can be taken over by some kind of dark entity, which will, you know, talk about possession, all sorts of different things. However, but the idea is that the soul isn't permanent. It can be taken and removed and actually can manifest itself outside of your body to become something like a ghost or a spirit or a cryptid. So your soul can be taken out and it can become the fucking Wendigo Mm. or Bigfoot. So that's for soul removal. This one is called Real Humans Died Millennia Ago. Real humans. Real ones. Or the fake ones. Because humans are unrecognizable as they were thousands of years ago. They had superior intellect and were better adapted to their environment. That's why we see feats of architecture like the pyramids uh, stumping today's experts. This theory believes that the reason why our experts are stumped is because they're idiots. Comparatively to their intellectual elites of the humans that were around thousands of years ago. And humans were not only more intelligent, they were better adapted to their environment. Ancient humans came in many shapes and sizes. We had mermaids, giants, shorties, and giants, all of whom were better adapted to their respective environments. And for whatever reason, something happened where everyone died but us. All right, the next one is hiring a hitman on yourself. So in some religions, it's a grave sin to um, reset your life. Clicking the old reset button, as it were. This theory begs the question on whether it's the action or the intent of what would condemn you to hail. Suppose you did this, but not, did not intend to die. You were just extremely bored with real life and wanted your life to resemble more of some type of action movie. You know, maybe you watch a lot of Tom Cruise films. I've got so much money, I don't know how to get rid of it. Hire a hitman, I think I shall. Not just a hitman, you hire a legion of hitmen to get you. What? And it's against you and them, baby. Would you go to hell? I don't know, but it'd be a (laughs) hell of a blockbuster movie. (laughs) I was going to say, so maybe it exists, but can you imagine a movie where someone hops online, hires a whole squad of hitmen, and then then tries to survive and outrun them? I would watch that movie. Would you ever get sick of sitting in McDonald's trying to get food? I want to fucking run for my life. I want. <laughs> That's a great theory. Oh my god. That's a good story. Yeah. That should happen. I'm going to sell it to Hollywood. All right. Yeah, let's write the script, sell it to Hollywood, and that's our movie. The next one is, for me, the Roman Empire still rules the world. Yeah. <laughs> the Roman Empire still rules the world, apparently, from secret societies in the shadows. It is believed that when the Roman Empire did collapse, quote-unquote, many of the powerful people within the society, like the senators, didn't just want to let their power evaporate. Evaporate? (laughs) Evaporate. Instead, they formed powerful groups that influenced uh, the powerful of the next age, like the Catholic Church, you know, all those jack wagons. And throughout the years, and even today, they've retained that influence. Some people take this theory to an even more extreme degree and believe that the senators just jump down a deep, dark, sweaty hole into Agartha and that they jump out of that hole every couple of decades and tell our politicians how to run this fucking place. I I don't know. Like, I I might feel a little bit better about that. Maybe just fuck off back to Agartha. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's funny. I love the fact that Agartha, again, it's kind of all theories are true, that Agartha exists, but it just harbors every piece of, like, secrecy known to man. Like when you're evil and you need to get away, you just go to Agartha. Agartha. Yeah, it's Agartha. like it's like the hiding place to go. It's the ace in the hole. Okay, so we're gonna jump into something called artifice prudence. So artifice prudence revolves around the idea that all art is not simply an act of creation, but rather a dance that follows a pattern that has been laid down by its predecessors. Every creative act, no matter how unique you may think it is, has been subtly guided by the echoes of previous innovations. And each new piece of art that comes along, it essentially bears the mark of every previous creation that the artist has experienced, be that intentional or not. That's why it's referred to as a dance, because in dance, every step you take was informed by the step prior, and the end result is a dance made up of steps that preceded the one before it. 
The other theory on this that shares the same name is tied into another theory we covered before that recalls things like microchips being found in dinosaur bones and that the technology predates the time frame that it's found in. The overall theory is that everything that you see, everything that you experience, everything that's been done is not unique. It's not ever discovered. It's not like a new thing. It's always a rediscovery or reimagining of something that's already been done. There's nothing new that you can do that hasn't been done in some way before. What are you, Miley Cyrus? And then we're going to talk about fractalization, which is almost the exact same thing as pattern manipulation. This revolves around the idea that fractals, or shapes, are supposedly the patterns of life itself. Also jumping back into some drug use here, those who did more of the intense psychotropic drugs like DMT or LSD have reported seeing this reality of fractals when experiencing the highs. It's been called hyper-reality by some that have seen it, and they are under the belief that it's not, that it's the true nature of reality, and humans who aren't tripping balls are just numb to it. So the real universe is full of fractals and patterns and all that stuff, and we're just so numb to it because we're in our boring, non-high, tripping ball state. Yep. The last one is Paleolithic Deep State. Are you done talking about Agartha yet? Because I'm not. Because this suggests that cavemen or Neanderthals didn't actually die out, but instead they went underground, deep underground, to Agartha or something close to somehow craft and build the government the way it is now. So it's literally the exact same fucking thing as the Roman Empire. So we have the Roman Empire is down there. We have Neanderthals, we have Hitler, we have T-Rexes. So literally, what this theory tells me is that this our hollow earth is full of every fucking ridiculously random thing. Guns, clubs, and swords. In person. You could possibly ever think. I'm under the impression that everyone who's gone missing, or everyone who has died or run away, is in Agartha. Makes sense. Everything. They all just go down to see their third eye. That's the theory, is that Agartha is real and everybody and everything ends up down there. All right, I'll be talking about depression overriding. Imagine having some extreme form of depression, one of which can be very debilitating. The thought process of this theory is that you have the power within your human spirit to override this energy into a positive one, permanently. So could you imagine being chronically optimistic? Someone like kicks you in the knee and you're like, oh boy, thanks. I mean, I would rather have that than chronically depressed. What's the opposite of ex- ex- existential, existential dread? dread? Existential joy? Yeah. Like, I don't know why I'm here or what my purpose is, but, but damn, I don't I'm give so a shit. Happy and I'm I don't know why. Always happy. God. It's like gravity and it just pulls me into happiness. I've got to fucking get it. This is believed to be a form of spiritual alchemy and supernatural nature. So, if you've accomplished this, you may be a witch or something. I don't fucking know. You're probably a witch or something. Yeah, burn her. Chronic existential joy. Yeah. What a problem to have. Wow. I just can't stop smiling. I'm so fucking happy. You're always so happy. What's wrong? I don't fucking know, but I am. You're sitting in the corner in a padded room, just, you know, rocking with a big smile on your face. You're sharpening your teeth because you're just so fucking happy. Nothing's going to. You want to taste you with blood because you're so happy. Nothing's going to get you down. All right. The next one is encorings. This is an introspective look on what the common denominator behaviors in humanity is at large. Meaning that what is the intrinsic common behaviors that all societies share, regardless if they've spoken to each other. This can be language, tool making, religion, war, art, culture, and much more. It becomes more interesting when you tie this to the great cycle theory. How many times did humans invent country? Did we always get sad about our dogs dying and our trucks breaking down? (laughs) It is also believed that we can find greater truths if we study these commonalities that could lead to a great enlightenment. And I apologize, I don't think I explained the great cycle theory, but it's the idea that humans have lived for a long time on this earth, billions of years. And what happens is that they grow technologically and what happens either a natural disaster resets them or, you know, they nuke themselves to death. And then they have to restart. 
and, and then they we keep rebuilding our rap we yeah. keep rebuilding our country and uh yeah that's it and you rediscover all these things you're like i created something new no you yeah. didn't journey was talking about that in the conspiracy theory it's called rediscovering you yeah just kidding i'm rediscovering you all right all right, the last one is God's Ego Death. The title on this one is insane. Uh, I mean, it's all right. You know, Ego Death is generally tied to the idea of the soul separating itself from the body, and it's supposedly been experienced by drug us- users, specifically hallucinatory ones. I mean, come on, Britain. Yeah. You know. No. You know. Mm-mm. Yeah, Britain knows. So you are no longer tied to who you are and are just out there in the ether. It states that God did something similar in that he broke himself into separate little bits. I thought you were going to say he got really high. Meaning that every part of existence in this world has little bits of God. And that it was his death of his original form, which was true perfection. Why did he do that? We'll talk about it later. But I mean, it's on that one there, like the ego death, it's also like if you're following a character somewhere like through a book and they're so set on having like a moral high ground here, but then like something changes their perspective and they change the way they think that can be called an ego death no it's about drugs britain you're wrong and you know if god was like splitting himself from the one true thing like he would have to make something lesser than himself right no it's lsd okay that's that's so drugs yeah that's the, the correct answer is, is drugs <laughs> the correct answer is drugs Okay, so you ready for this one it's called the soy grand theory boobs <laughs> men boobs so this is literally like the grand finale of the soy theories that we have covered it's the final consistently. Form. The idea that all of the soy boys are taking over is finally here. The theory states, very simply put, that the damages of soy have caused permanent, irreparable damage to the human population. And this is going to eventually lead to the totalitarian femboy empire. Soy has fucked us all over. My second to last one before I'm done with all the iceberg is golden rules of nature. So the theory here relates to the five golden rules of nature. All of them are needed to survive in nature. These five rules are balance, growth, connection, harmonization, and love. So if you put all of those things into perspective, it does make a little bit of sense because us as humans can't live without those things as well. You have to have balance because if you go too heavily into one... If I go into hardcore, like, just eating out all the time, like, fast food, you're going to die. You have to, like, balance, like, healthy food with, like, the disastrous foods. If we don't grow, we can't gain the strength needed to survive. If we don't connect, we risk isolation and loneliness with depression, which itself is a killer. We need to harmonize because too much evil, and you could end up being killed yourself. And without love, what's the point? The reason it's a theory here is due to all the talk of the physical world existing along with the spiritual realm. And if we don't have those five things in the spiritual realm, well, it's going to lead to sort of spiritual death, which isn't good. It also ties into some earlier mentioned theories on our humanity dying because we aren't following these rules. So ultimately, you have five rules to live by. Everything in nature, if you don't, you're just going to die. That's kind of where it is. And then I'm going to end... My last iceberg topic on there is no conspiracy, which is essentially the counter argument to everything is a conspiracy or all theories are true, that everything on this iceberg has been created to deter you for no reason at all, that none of this actually exists, that it's all just captivating us and causing us to spend hundreds of hours researching and talking and editing and sending out to the world, talking about conspiracy theories that simply don't exist. Why, Cleet? Why? Because you got your degree in horology. Exactly. Horology is where you got your degree. But it's just, it's the idea that there are no theories, and it's just kind of a scapegoat to other things. That's where I will leave the iceberg behind. And Cleet will send us completely home. All right. This one is God's last wish. So what was God's last wish? If you were a perfect being, what would your last wish be? He wanted the coldest, most perfect, frosty glass of beer. Some pancakes so hot that even he cannot eat. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently God created humans to have a companion because he was lonely. 
Mm. Is that where dogs came from? He valued choice over divinity and thus broke himself down to smaller pieces like we were talking about to create humanity and everything in this world. So we are pieces of God that get free will, which gives us the opportunity to demonstrate how we will use this soul to either get closer to divinity or further away. So the last one is final understanding. And, okay, um, the final understanding. Like this is send us all home, right? Oh, well, no, because I couldn't find anything on it. And normally I would try to maybe wax dramatic and give you a nice ending where it just uplifts you and says that you spending 24 hours listening to this series has somehow encapsulated some type of meaning that is useful to you in your life. It's really not. I mean, we were just having fucking fun. Okay, I don't know. So I'll leave you with something that I think is interesting. We are just little bits of dust in the universe created by the universe into more complex atoms that are just trying to understand itself. And that's all we are in this world. And, you know, fuck You're it. on a space rock right now. Yeah. One of Life's billions. Life's fucking weird, man. On a space rock floating mm. around in a galaxy full of billions and billions and ever-expanding universe. consciousness and, like, who the fuck thought that was going to happen. And does, so let's drink a beer and be like, damn. Yeah. Drink a beer. Subscribe to the show. Laugh a little bit. Try and find out where your third eye actually is. Might be in your butt. Just got to get deeper to find out. Maybe need a little bit of help with that one. Mm, yeah. But, Cleet, we are fucking done yeah. with the iceberg. Mm. That was it. That was it. So, thank you, everybody. If you started with us from the very beginning, a special thank you to you for going all the way through for the over 600 Conspiracy Theories Recovered. If you just dropped in for a quick listen, thank you as well. And a huge thank you to our nine current paid supporters of the show, Claytor, Lord of Soup, Curtis and Lara, Lara, Jackson, Modelo Time, Mothman, Devin, Conklin Family, and Lou. Your constant support of the show is tremendous. We really greatly appreciate it. Um, and if you want to support the show to join the ranks of these fabulous people, we'll post the link in the description below. All of the support goes a long way of helping us branch out on the show. We're getting closer and closer to adding video and going to the Clown Motel by doing what, Clee? Well, we're only 107 subscribers away on YouTube. We just need to hit 500. So if you're listening to us there, please like, share, and subscribe as it really helps us get us out there. And as always, thank you for entering the abyss. Until next time.